for working from home, right? Mm -hmm. And they enjoy this, they want to keep working from home. But the problem from this, as you may imagine, is what about the, the radon levels in their home? If they have high radon levels in their home, now all of a sudden they spend all their day, 24 hours of their day in their home, which may cause a problem to their health. Yeah. Uh, how, what's your view on this? Yeah, so this is something that we've been worried about again, really since March of 2020, when the pandemic really started to affect most of us in the West um, in, in the way that it did. Uh, and so we've actually studied it, and the, that, that will be released very soon. Um, we're in now 2023. And basically what we found is that um, people have spent 10.6% more of their year in their primary house uh, because they're not at the office and they're not at other people's houses in the way that we were before the pandemic started to affect us. Now, one of the things that that produced, that produced is actually a surprising 20% increase yeah. in actual radon exposure mm. because it, in, at least in Canada, impacted younger people more. And in that case, there's a bias towards higher radon exposure for the young. And so this has large implications to occupational health and safety and, and it is indicative of a future where when we are working from our places that we live, with very different radon risks, we now need to consider that a lot more than we ever did before. So m maybe you can chime in here, Jose, because obviously this is a big problem for, for us working in the radon industry, mm -hmm. but for, for actors like governments, and et cetera, do you feel that they're taking the right action, the right steps to, to erase this problem? Uh, well, actually, I remember uh, in one of the board meetings of the European Radon Association, I think it was one of the first meetings after the pandemic started to hit, we started to discuss this issue and uh, it was like uh, nobody knew what to do because it's a little bit complicated you know to tackle this problem especially in europe in europe is a little bit different from canada mm -hmm. you know Arab, we are 27 countries in yes, europe with right. multiple cultures and different governments so but yeah definitely something that they need to to start thinking about yeah what do you think would be the the correct steps forward mm -hmm. to, to solve this so I'll, I'll start by saying that it's too new to fully know exactly what is going to be appropriate. A lot of people who are opting into new, you know, full-time telecommuting or hybrid telecommuting, meaning, you know, they work from home for some of the week. Um, those are now formalized agreements versus the sort of more casual approach that we take in as part of the emergency response to the pandemic. Well, if you have a formalized work from home agreement, it could often be part of that agreement that either you as the employee have ensured that the environment in which you are working is safe or your employer provides you the resources in order to ensure that that air is safe by performing a radon test and if that's high reducing the levels mm -hmm. yeah it makes sense and this is it'll be very interesting to see in the coming years yeah. what happens with this because i think we can all agree that the the phenomenon of working from home mm -hmm. is not going anywhere correct it is mm -hmm. it's definitely a new normal that is yeah. here to stay and if it does stay the way it is Folks like myself who are in the world of cancer research yeah. and predicting future burdens of lung cancer, well, the writing is on the wall. If we don't respond to it today and adequately, we will see a much increased burden of future lung cancers as a consequence of the changes that have happened in the past three years.